Hi everyone, it's Menno, and in this video I'm going to be responding to Graham Norton and a few things he said about cancel culture not really existing. Okay. And when he touched on the gender stuff, basically going... But Graham, as a gay man myself, I would like to ask you to... Listen. For a few minutes, because it does appear that as gay men, we are now at... And to be honest, I think you need to grow some fucking balls. <laughs> well. Rather than joining all those other gay men who've been letting the site down so badly for women and homosexuals for years. Now, you may want nothing to do with this. I'm sort of embarrassed that I'm somehow drawn into it. But you're in it now, so you may as well. <laughs> Because what's going on here is not just like a, a storm in a gender teacup or a person being cancelled here, a career being cancelled there. What we're dealing with are concerted efforts in law, in policy, in how we communicate to cancel sex itself as a fact of life. I know, bonkers. And if sex is cancelled that way, then so is homosexuality. One person who gets this is JK Rowling. If sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. You've described her views as problematic. And maybe you're like, Oh, women. So I thought maybe if you hear it from a gay man and how it affects male homosexuals, it might land differently. I've split this video into three parts. Part one, cancel culture. What cancel culture? Part two, JK Rowling, mermaids and stupid gay men. And part three, all I ask of you. So, cup your balls, hold tight, ah! not too tight, and let's go. Cancel culture? What cancel culture? You read a lot of articles and papers by people complaining about cancel culture, and you think, in what world are you cancelled? I'm reading your article <laughs> in a newspaper, <laughs> or you're doing interviews about how terrible it is to be cancelled, or, you know, so I think... Th the word is the wrong word. Maybe there is a better word for that because the only way to literally cancel someone would be to kill them and obviously nobody's calling for that, surely. Kill JK Rowling! Kill the turfs! Kill the turfs! Trans power! Kill the turf! I'd say a better description would be a culture of harassment, intimidation and smearing with a view to silencing people or ruining their lives if they say something outrageous like sex is real and it matters or I don't think the abuse J.K. Rowling gets is okay. As your old friend and fellow homosexual James Dreyfus only knows too well. What, what about this idea of cancel culture, that you've experienced a form of this, haven't you? Uh, and this was to do with a, a Doctor Who role. I signed a letter in support of J.K. Rowling and the horrendous abuse that she had been subjected to, and still it is. Um, and I also signed a letter uh, asking Stonewall for a respectful debate. And then I got a raft of abuse from the fans of this particular programme. And then I was erased from the artwork from the CDs, and my name kept disappearing. And they released um, a CD of all the people who had played the part I'd played. Yes. And um, I was left off it. Whenever I hear people saying cancel culture doesn't exist, I just go, huh. Or Graham Linehan, the man who wrote the show that gave you your big break. Graham, you know very well what happened to me. You know what has happened to the Father Ted musical. It's been cancelled. This is a musical I worked on for five years. It was on its feet and ready to go. And it's been cancelled. Why are you saying all these things? What has J.K. Rowling actually done to make you so angry? What has she done? What has she said? What has she written that you disagree with? Or Christian Hansen, who's been temporarily let go of the company he co-founded himself for tweeting, I stand in full support of J.K. Rowling and Graham Linehan. Anyways, Graham, what word do you think would be better? I think uh, the word should be accountability. Okay. You know, I think, you know, John Cleese has been very public recently about complaining about what you got to say. And I just think it's, 
It must be, and it must be very hard to be a man of a certain age. Says the 59-year-old spring chicken. <laughs> who's been able to say whatever he liked for years. And now suddenly there's some accountability. There, you know, it's, it's, it's free speech, but not consequence free. Okay, let's look at how that works. Here's a float from Dresden Pride earlier this year. Turtles can suck my huge trans cock. Ooh. No consequences. Here are some lesbians at Cardiff Pride this year with a sign saying, Lesbians don't like penises. Ew, no peen. Keep them away. They were told by the police to leave. Or at Bordeaux Pride in France last year, when lesbians had a similar sign, some idiot with magical lady feels tried to burn them with a lit flare. Are those consequences lesbians should be facing for simply stating they don't do dick at Pride? Meanwhile, in Norway, a woman is being investigated by the police under hate crime charges for saying that men can't be lesbians. We can do a whole Eurovision version of this nonsense. The erasure of sex. The Euro edition. And so, you know, I'm aware but, but of saying, aren't mean, you, aren't you aware? Mean, when, you, when you do so, like, I'm aware of I, the things I say. You're aware that you don't want to lose your job on RuPaul's Drag Race UK. And I'm sure you remember the backlash that RuPaul got himself when initially he wasn't too keen on trans women who change their bodies competing on the show. But then he quickly towed the line. So perhaps the word shouldn't be cancel culture, but compliance culture. J.K. Rowling. Mermaids and stupid gay man. But what about then? I mean, th 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 that's that's a very easy target, isn't it? A sort of you know middle-aged man who's used to saying what he wants, rule the world, man explains everywhere he goes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But but for example, J.K. Rowling. Then I mean that, that that that's harder to to make a point with, isn't it? When you look at someone expressing what may or may not be popular opinions, but to 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 be deluged with the kind of anger, rage, um, and attempts at censorship, it seems to me something more than just a, a middle-aged man kind of not being able to say something he used to say in the days of empire. Good question, because this is what we're seeing time and time again. J.K. Rowling tweets uh, something, something, women's rights, and all hell breaks loose. She gets vilified, people burn her books, they have their Harry Potter tattoos removed, she gets rape threats, death threats, people walk down the street with signs like this, they even show up at our house. Pink News publishes article after article about how awful she is, New York Times, Political Europe and others, they join in the fun, all because a woman talking about women's rights is transphobic. Maya Forstetter lost a job simply for stating the biological fact that humans can't change sex because transphobic. Katie Alcock and Helen Watts were expelled from Girl Guides for raising safeguarding concerns for girls because transphobic. It's also happening to lesbians. So Alison Bailey, a barrister, was uh, discriminated against by her chambers for talking about sex being real. Terrible. Julie Bindle had a talk cancelled at a library because of her position that being female is a thing. <gasps> Kathleen Stock was hounded of her job of about 18 years for saying similar stuff. Bad lesbian! And a bunch of lesbian, gay and bisexual people who founded a new LGB organisation after they thought, whoa, you know, Stonewall UK has completely lost the plot, have been relentlessly attacked and smeared ever since. They've had crowdfunders pulled down, they had funding pulled when they finally managed to get some, and legal action's been taken to have them stripped of their charity status. Who started this legal action? Mermaids! The children's charity run by Susie Green. There are children here somewhere! The woman who had her own son's balls cut off in Thailand for his 16th birthday. Happy birthday to you! Mermaids, by the way, are currently being investigated for safeguarding failures. Had a pedophile apologist as a trustee. Surprise, surprise. And a digital engagement officer whose asshole and erect penis are displayed on Twitter as art. So it seems pretty clear to me who the same people are in the room. But so many stupid gay men are supporting mermaids and smearing the LGBT alliance. Like Matt Lucas, 
Russell T. Davies, MP John Nicholson, who was one of the witnesses for mermaids. At this tribunal, it once again became clear that it wasn't just about cancelling um, LGB alliances, charity status. It was about ripping the rug of reality from underneath sex and same-sex attraction. Day one of the tribunal, a witness for mermaids, Paul Roberts, a gay man, states that it would be transphobic to say that a female cannot be a gay man. Okay? How can we, Graham, talk about ourselves as homosexual men in plain English if doing so gets us branded transphobic? While at the same time being peddled this bullshit. I thought, man, we really should film a video about how to eat pussy. That's a good idea. I definitely need one of those. Specifically for gay men. <sighs> Over the next couple of days, Mermaid's barrister tried his best to frame any person who recognizes the material reality of our sex bodies as someone who has a certain belief. As if sex, you know, is not a fact of life, but somehow a, an ontological position. And without any sense of shame, he calmly challenged whether homosexuality, which is a protected characteristic under the Equality Act 2010, is even based on sex at all. He also suggested that males can be lesbians, and in doing so, bringing a lesbian in her 70s to tears. This is not okay. What good is it to have rights protected in law when they're not even being recognized? Same for women and sex-based rights. Do you see now why JK Rowling is speaking up? Why so many women are? Why so many lesbians are protesting this? And why we need gay men to stand up and say, not in my name, instead of going along with it, cheerleading it, like idiots like Matt Lucas, like Paul Roberts, like Russell T. Davies, like John Nicholson. Anyways, I'll let you answer the JK Rowling question. I mean, what I feel weird about this is when I'm asked about it, then I become part of this discussion. I know, discussion. that's what I'm wondering. You became part of it when you said that J.K. Rowling had problematic views. And, and all I'm painfully aware of is that my voice adds nothing to that discussion. You're a gay man with a huge platform. Your voice could make a huge difference, you know, and show us that not all gay men are happy to sell homosexuality and women's rights down the river just for the sake of gender. And I'm sort of embarrassed that I'm somehow drawn into it. It was only a matter of time. You know, and if people want to shine a light on those issues, then, and I hope people do, then talk to trans people. I did. I peaked. And a key lesson I learned is that if you want to understand women's issues and women's rights, you talk to women, not Eddie Izzard. I also recommend you talk to gay male detransitioners who, like you and I, know a thing or two about what it's like to struggle with being gay, being called names for it, being told that you're not an actual man, really. You and I may have found ways to deal with that, but some others take it to heart a bit too much, go down a certain medical path, and years later go, I fucked up. and are left to pick up the pieces of their lives as gay men, but now with their dick and balls gone. Talk to the parents of trans kids. What, like Kai Shepley's mum? I remember even thinking before Kai was three that I think this kid might be gay. Hmm. And I thought that that could not happen and that would not happen. She's not even hiding it. We started praying fervently. Prayers turned into Googling conversion therapy and how can we implement these techniques at home. Spanking her, really spanking her. She'd get on great with Susie Green. I had a very sensitive, quite effeminate little boy who was probably gay. All the girl toys or girly toys as such, were taken away and put away, and Jack was made aware that this was not appropriate. Talk to doctors, talk to psychiatrists, talk to someone who can illuminate this in some way. Why do women have to talk to doctors and psychiatrists before they can assert their own rights and boundaries as female people? What illumination do they need? What being a woman looks like through a man's eyes? I think they know. That's why they want their boundaries. 
And when I, for example, as a, as a male homosexual, walk past a gay sauna and in the window see a poster of a woman in a binder, do I have to go and see a, a doctor or a psychiatrist to check why my eyes can tell that she's female? Do I need therapy so I can start seeing her as a gay man? Can you imagine? Hey, mom, you're going to be a grandma. What? I thought you were gay. Super gay. Knocked up a guy at the gay sauna. Seriously, why do we have to put up with this? I don't want vaginas in the gay sauna. Call me crazy. We're not the ones who need to talk to doctors and psychiatrists, Graham. You know, I'm very aware that as bloke off the telly, you know, your voice can be artificially amplified. And oh, once in a blue moon, that can be good. Yeah, when you're selling a book. But most of the time, it's just a distraction. And it's just, you know, it's for clicks, it's for whatever, you know, that you can put my name in a headline, you know, Graham Norton slams, Graham Norton defends, Graham Norton weighs in on. And actually, Graham Norton shouldn't be in your headline. But you are, Graham, you are in the headlines. If, if, you, if you want to talk about something, talk about the thing. The thing is, lesbians being told to accept this guy as one of their own. Gay men being told to eat pussy. Women wanting single-sex, female-only spaces. Stonewall CEO Nancy Kelly comparing lesbians who don't do dick to sexual racists. Women having to take the Scottish government to court over their attempts to redefine what a woman is in law. People losing their job for saying sex matters. Homophobia being raised as a safeguarding concern at the Tavistock JIDS clinic and being ignored. Gay male detransitioners. More and more lesbians and gay men having had enough of this bullshit and wondering when someone like yourself is finally gonna speak. It doesn't, you know, you don't need to attach a Kardashian or a whatever to a serious subject. The subject should be enough in itself. The subject is serious enough for J.K. Rowling to keep speaking out about it. She could have easily turned a blind eye, counted her millions and said, My voice adds nothing. But she didn't. And that's the difference between courage and cowardice. It, you know, it's the Michael Gove thing about, you know, enough of experts. No, please, can we have some experts? Can we rustle up some experts and talk to them uh, rather than man in shiny pink suit? There are plenty of experts and plenty of women among them too. So maybe before donning a shiny pink suit and saying that J.K. Rowling's views are problematic. You should have listened. But you don't need to be an expert to know what a man is, what a woman is, what a lesbian is, and what a gay man is. And I'm sure that whenever you've taken a guy home and you took his trousers down, you never went, oh, uh, you, you have a penis. I'm sorry, I, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, really. So cut the crap, Graham. This really isn't as complicated as some people would have you believe. And yes, your very gay, very homosexual male voice very much matters in this. Which brings us to part three. All I ask of you, all I ask of you, are uh -huh. So, Graham, as you can see, it's a bit um, later in the day. And as I was having some food, I read that 10 years or so ago, you donated £1,500 to a crowdfunder for someone to have a double mastectomy. That's the amputation of two perfectly healthy breasts on, of course, a female person. So you may say that... My voice adds nothing. But... Money talks. Money talks. And so much for being drawn into it. When you've been talking about transphobia and trans people being such a vulnerable group and funding surgery since 2011. You, the man who says... I'm aware of I, the things I say. Pretty clear now why you didn't want to commit the high treason of saying, yes, the abuse JK Rowling is getting is appalling. So it looks like you're just another disappointment to the growing number of gay men who are waking up to what's going on, who are feeling concerned, who are feeling horrified, betrayed and increasingly angry, just as women have been doing 
for years. And no, these aren't all just man of a certain age. These are guys across the generations from teenagers to guys in the 20s and 30s to guys my and your age, even an old gay granddad who was there on the first night of the Stonewall riots in New York. But while women have J.K. Rowling to look up to, to draw strength from, to raise their voices up, as gay guys, who can we look to? We've got James Dravis, Andrew Doyle, Douglas Murray. Okay, great. Rupert Everett and Simon Callow sort of dipped their toes into it. But where are the big gay guns when it comes to standing up for homosexuals? You, funding breast amputation. Sir Ian McKellen, beating the woo-woo drum. Boy George, makes fun of pronouns, but also says that Trans women respect the goddess energy. What? Elton John? Gone with the woo-woo. Stephen Fry also donated to that same crowdfunder. And while he is a staunch defender of free speech, when it comes to this, he's being pretty quiet. Obviously, he got slammed when he narrated an audiobook for J.K. Rowling and made some half assed statement about having huge sympathy for trans people everywhere. But what about the gays? Are we just supposed to take the, the, the erasure of our sex and sexual orientation lying down? Should gay men just accept that, you know, being told to eat pussy is the new normal? To have females in our intimate spaces? Do lesbians have to accept a man with a beard as their own? Do they have to accept being told to suck dick? Do they have to accept that they can't say they don't like that at Pride without the police booting them out? Why do we have to spell it out that this is all wrong? Even you can't be caught unawares. You so-called big gay guns, you're all fucking weak. And the worst thing is, it's the younger ones who are struggling with being gay, with being lesbian, who are gonna get hurt the most as they get sucked in to this gender madness vortex. How many young lesbians have to come forward who've already gone down that path and now find themselves without breasts, without wombs, with atrophied vaginas. How many gay men whose dicks are gone? How many of them have to come forward before you understand this is dangerous for the gays? Because their stories are not trans stories. They are the stories of homosexuals during a very dark, very sinister chapter in our history where our bodies are being mutilated, where we're going back into the closet, where we can't go gay bars and pride home anymore, where we look on in horror as our house is on fire and everything that was fought for is being torn apart and left in tatters. And all you can do is squirm at a question and go, I'm sort of embarrassed that I'm somehow drawn into it. You fucking coward. Honestly, grow some balls. That's all I ask of you. It must be very hard to be a man of a certain age who's been able to say whatever he liked for years and now suddenly there's some accountability. Hello, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful or informative and you'd like to support me in making more, please consider supporting me via Patreon or if you prefer, send me some love via PayPal. And thank you so much to those of you who already support me that way. It makes a huge difference. Massive big thank you to my big spenders, Helper Open, Mama Turf and the Turventines, the lovely Mary, me Julie, Julia, JPH, Lindy Lou from Down Under, and Esther. Thank you.